What's up, Internet? My name is Michael Cook. This is Blue Giant Media, and we're here to connect through gaming. Today, we're going to take a look at Favor of the Pharaoh. This is designed by Tom Lehman, published by Bezier Games. We're going to set the game up in real time so you can get a feel for how the game plays, what it's all about, how long it takes to set up, go through some rounds of play, so you can overall get a feel for the game, whether it's going to be your style or not. So, without further ado, let's ready, set, play. All right, so Favor of the Pharaoh is kind of like a, an engine building type game. So we've got the rule book here, which kind of gives you the different level bars, which let you know what, uh, what you're gonna need to roll in order to get some of the different bonuses that you can get. So first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna set up for our first game. And for our first game, you can see each of these has an A or a B. We're gonna go with the A side. And then each of them you can see has like this one's got a three dots on it. This one's got uh, seven dots on it. So you're going to put them in order from three, followed by four, five, six, and seven. And you're going to put them on the A side. That's the beginning side. You can also play the B side and then uh, you can mix and match after you get a little bit more comfortable with the game. And then, uh, so the way that I've got this organized, I've got all the uh, level three, 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 four, 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 five, 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 six, 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 and seven. It's just what kind of managed to fit. It's the only thing that really made sense. I kind of wish that it had been labeled underneath saying where everything was supposed to go, but that's how I've got it set up. Um, so you'll need all the dice. We'll go ahead and set them all to the side here. And then we're gonna go ahead and take all of these different scarab tokens. We're gonna set them over here and we're gonna turn them all face down because you can see some of them are going to add a pip to a die roll that you, you know, one of the dice that you got and one are gonna, you know, some of them are gonna let you re-roll. So we're gonna go ahead and flip all those over so that you can't tell which is which. And we're gonna make sure that they're all mixed up, which, I mean, they're pretty mixed up right now because they were in the bag. All right, so all of those there. Now on each of the different um, pieces here, they're kind of labeled. There's like a, a one, two, three, four, five. Uh, and some of them go up to six. So what we're gonna do right now is we're just gonna take the lowest numbered ones for each of the different levels. So for the level three, there's gonna be two yellow ones, so we'll grab number one and number two, and then we'll grab the blues that say, I believe, uh, one, two, and the uh, one or two, you know, because they're played with either set. This is another thing that you can kind of set up and you can mix and match. Now on here, in the corner, so I'm gonna set it for two players, but you can see right here that says A and it says equals. That means you're gonna have the same number equal to the number of players that you've got. So if I'm setting up for two players, I'm gonna put two of them out. Setting up for three, there's gonna be three of them out, etc. So, all right, we got the one and the two, and I've got two of each because we're playing two players and we need two of them. All right, then we'll go over here, the blue one's right here, one to two players, or you know, set number one to two. We're playing basically set one, or including numbers one and two. Again, you can go either, you know, number one and try and grab everything that's ones and twos. You can grab everything that's threes and fours or fives or mix and match. But uh, yeah, oh, I need to grab the reds. So number one through two, put that there. Then we're gonna go to the level four. I'm gonna grab two of those. And actually, no, it's one because in this row you can see it is number of players minus one. So since we're playing a two player game, there's just going to be one of each of these. And then we're gonna go ahead and grab, let's see where number oh, one's right here in my hand. And I'll explain obviously, you know, what each of these things does in a little bit. Right now we're just getting everything set up. All right, then we'll grab one of those, the one through two, one of those, so the way you're going to be playing the game is everybody is going to, and here we have number of players minus two, but there's always a minimum of one. So we're still going to have one of them there. All right. Uh, but you're going to be starting with three dice and you're going to each round roll those three dice. And then you're going to basically have to lock in at least one die 
every time you roll and then take the remaining dice and roll them. So here we're going minus two again, which again is just going to be one in a two player game. All right. Um, so you can feasibly at the beginning only roll three times because you are only going to have three dice. At the end of the game, you're going to have more dice though, and you're going to be able to, uh, and the queen is in every game. That's why it's got one through six there on it. Um, but at the end of the game, you're going to have a lot more dice. So it could take more rounds. You can always lock in more than one, but you must lock in at least one of your dice each time you roll. So each player is going to be given at the beginning of the game one of, uh, these are, never mind, not those, one of these. So one is going to be the start player and one is just going to be going to the other player. You're going to grab one of these per player and set them to the side. These are for if you ever come across when you can't get any of the ones that are out here, you can grab these, which give you at least something. I'm going to go ahead and grab the queen token and put that out there. And you can grab these and just set them to the side as well. The rest of this stuff, you can go ahead and set aside. If you want, you can hang on to the rule book for reference, but uh, it's pretty simple stuff. And if you want, you can have uh, right, this nearby so you can double check what everything does. This very clearly tells you what each of the different tiles um, is. You'll also notice there's these pyramids. You, If you want, you can hang on to them but they don't really do anything at all until the end of the game. So then uh, we've got things just about set up here, but the last thing we're going to do is give everybody their starting stuff, which comprises or is comprised of the tokens, which you'll go ahead and put them upside down, shuffle them around. Everyone draws one. Whoever draws this is the start player. And then you're going to give the second player one scarab, the third player two scarabs, and the fourth player three scarabs then you're ready to go. So we'll give this player one scarab. You can keep the scarabs uh, secret. Or actually, uh, you gotta keep them face up. All right, and I am, I guess you would say mildly OCD. I like it, I think it looks better when everything's all nice and tidy. So there we go. So now we've got everything set up. What we're gonna do is starting with the first player, they will get as is shown by their little token here, they're gonna get three dice. So they'll take them and they will roll them. Of these, they have to save at least one, but you can save more if you want. Like here I've got a, uh, two ones and a three. So I'm gonna go ahead and save both of those ones. And if you want, you can use this pyramid, you know, just throughout the game to do things like that. But because I don't like to do that, I'm just gonna put this aside until the end of the game because it doesn't do anything until the end of the game. So I got those set aside. Then I can take what's remaining and roll that. And I rolled a three again. So then I can look and see what's here. With three of a kind, I could have taken this, which would give me one more uh, die, red die, every turn for the rest of the game. I can take, for a pair, I can take this one, which is gonna give me one red die that I'll set on there with a two. And at some point after the first roll, I can add that two to the to to what's kind of out there and either lock it in as a two or keep it and just re-roll it with the next roll. Uh, if they were all even, I can take this one. And whenever you take any of the blues, you also are going to get one scarab. That's what's shown on the little bar here. And then with the reds, whenever you take a red, you get to take um, two of those scarab tokens. But this one is gonna give you one scarab token every round. This one, the, all the red ones are one-time uses. So if I were to take this one, I would set it aside. And at some point later in the game, I'm going to be able to add one die to, red die to my roll and get two scarab tokens. But that's a one, then once I use that, I'm going to set it aside and it's done for the game. So since I got a pair, I'm gonna go ahead and grab that and I'll go ahead and add it next to there and pass the dice over. Then this player is going to take their dice, roll them, and do the same type of thing. So here I've got two, three, four. Well, I could go ahead and use this to add one pip to make this three, now a four. And then roll this. And well, now I can choose. I can either do all even or the pair. Since uh, I'm gonna go for all even. So I'll take that. And that's gonna give me one of these scarab tokens immediately. And then I will start getting one every round. Then this player is gonna go ahead, they get to roll, they start with their extra die over there because it's added later. That's what the little plus symbol means, means you can add it later. And now I've got two, three, and a five. 
I could add this to now or I could save it till later. I'm gonna go ahead and save this three and roll these two. Okay, I will go ahead and save this two and add this two in now. Uh, dang, I'll go ahead and save that. Darn, I was really hoping to get, you know, a straight is kind of what I was, was trying to work towards there. But, so I got five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 is the total. So I could get this one right here, which would give me something later in the game. Uh, or I could, you know, five, I, oh, I got a pair there. I don't have all even, I don't have two pairs. Um, let's see. Now I can't go ahead and claim this because you can't have two of the exact same tile. That's not allowed. So this one's off the table, it's not an option for me. Uh, so really the only thing that I can get is this, or I could go ahead and grab this, which makes it so at any time if I lock a pair, then I can add an extra die. It's not an automatic that I get an extra die every round, but if I lock a pair, then I can get an extra die. So I could grab that, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and just grab this right now, which is gonna give me two of these Scarab tokens, which I kind of need right now. And I should have flipped that over. And I will go ahead and save that there. Come over here. On this player's turn, they're going to get an additional Scarab, thanks to their blue tile, and then they'll go ahead and roll. Now I've got four, five, six, which would be great progress towards one of those types of things. So let's see, I'm gonna go ahead and save the six. Roll the rest. I'm gonna go ahead and save that six. Roll the next. Hey, check it out, I didn't even have to use any of those. So now I'm gonna go ahead and grab the farmer. The farmer doesn't have that plus sign on it, so it's just gonna give me one extra die every round for the rest of the game. Then we're gonna go back over to this player. They'll grab their three, roll them, and they could choose to use this to add another red die just for this one round and get two scarabs, but I'm not gonna do that. Um, all right, so I got two threes there. I'm going to go ahead and add this to the total and use my scarab token to make that a three. Then I'll roll my last one. And I could use my reroll, but I'm gonna hang on to that because I'm fine with getting three of a kind so that I got an extra die. All right, then we'll come over here. This player is just gonna get four right off the bat and grab a scarab. We got another add. All right, one, two, four. I'm actually just gonna go ahead and use that to make this a three and boom, one, two, three, four. That's gonna give me this tile right here. This says every round I'm gonna get another scarab and it's gonna give me a white die. The white die are still numbered one through six like the red dice, but it's called an immediate die. Whenever you roll it, you can't, you have to lock it in that round. You can still use modifications on it, but you can't like lock in a red and then roll this one again. This has to be in the first lock. You can lock it in addition to other things, but it, all white dice must be locked after their first, uh, first roll. All right. And it's gonna come back over here. This player is going to have the option to have up to five dice now. All right, so two, two, four, four. Uh, let's go ahead and grab that two and add it in and see if we can maybe get four of a kind and get that blue die. Ooh, so close. So I'll go ahead and, I don't think there's anything that I can really get with this, but I'll go ahead and keep that. Well, all right. I've got a full house, so I could get the head servant, which allows you to save your uh, immediate dice as whatever number you want. I could also grab the two pair, which allows you to take a die once per round and just flip it over. Uh, as I don't have any immediate dice and there's no way to get any more immediate dice in this particular setup, I'm gonna go ahead and grab this. Give me the ability to flip dice over. All right. Then this player is going to get four dice, plus the immediate die, plus two scarab tokens. All right, so we got two, four, four, four. So we've got that immediate you know, benefit right off the bat. We could go ahead and grab this, which would let us set that to whatever we want. That's kind of nice. Oh, and when this player grabbed that, they should have gotten a scarab token. Now I'm gonna go ahead and grab that and take the Scarab token that comes with it. So as you can see, you're gonna go back and forth as you build your way up. They all kind of do some pretty interesting things, but the game is going to end once someone gets to 
get seven of a kind. They're going to claim the queen, and uh, on that particular roll, you have to have seven of a kind. So let's say you got seven, and this is when the pyramid is at least mildly useful. Let's say you rolled, um, you got seven fours. You're gonna go ahead and take a four and lock it in with the seven there. That way everybody can see that's what you had. The next person in line is going to have to beat your roll. So they either have to have seven fives, seven sixes, or eight of any number, or nine of any number. Basically, that makes it better. So then the next player has a chance to take all their dice and roll them, use all their different abilities, all that kind of good stuff to try and beat that total. If someone beats that total and it comes back around, it basically, I guess, not if, it keeps on going around the table, elevating the score until someone can't beat it. And that person is then going to be the winner. So like if this person gets uh, seven fours and then it comes over to this person's turn, they manage to get like eight sixes and then it comes back to this person's turn and they manage to get nine twos and this person's only got eight dice. They can't get nine of anything, so they're out. Whoever's remaining after everybody's out is going to be the winner. So this person would win with nine twos. So that's gonna be how you're gonna play the game, work your way up, and who, once someone gets the queen, then that's going to enact the end game, and whoever has the most, the you know, highest die roll at the final roll off is going to be the winner. All right, that should give you a pretty good idea of how to set up and play through Favor of the Pharaoh by Tom Lehman and published by Bezier Games. If you wanna know more about Favor of the Pharaoh, take a look in the description section where you can find a link to an unboxing as well as an overview and full review of Favor of the Pharaoh and a link to macronovagames.com where you can buy Favor of the Pharaoh and hundreds of other great games. Until next time, I wanna thank you so much for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe if you like what you see. And let me know in the comment section below if you got any feedback, corrections, uh, recommendations, any of that kind of good stuff. And as always, have a wonderful day.